Hello and welcome from wherever you are watching. Today I will show you how I made this piece, how I made this poster and what I did um, to create it. Um, I used two programs for it. One is Blender for the 3D animation in the middle and the other one is After Effects for basically everything else. So let me just right, uh, jump right into Blender and the setup that I have here looks like this. Um, also a quick shout out to ducky 3d um, and he has made a tutorial on how to make this actually and not just a walkthrough basically um, yeah i will link that down below if you're interested in that how to actually make this and not just the overview but yeah just let me show you what i did i have a text here i created this with uh, the font that I always use for these posters which is just called Monument Extended Ultra Bold in this case and I um, added some extrusion for this and animated the extrusion you can see that from the side here from 0.5 to 0.15 um, from uh, frame 0 to frame 120 and this is the first part of the animation so that it yeah just changes the length of the letters and then i used modifiers at first i was going for remeshing um just to get rid of these artifacts that you can see here but in the end i did not really like the look of the remeshed uh, version and just went for just, let me just delete this um just went for this and i thought this is just fine as it is so i went for that and i also did not use the subdivision um, I just used a simple deform modifier and um, set the axis to X and um, animated the, the angle from also 0 to 360 on frame uh, 120. And yeah, the um, point is just in the middle on all axes so that it just yeah, rotates or twists around the um, part in the middle. Let me just... no. Oh, no, no. Go for this um yeah this is basically um what i did for the animation that is almost everything that you need to to create this type of text animation and the good thing um while not um remeshing this by hand and just leaving as as it is as it is is that you can go into the edit mode and change the text to whatever you like and it will just update the whole animation so that is pretty neat. I should maybe just go back to normal. Okay. And the next part is the lighting setup. And that is also not that complicated. I have an extra um, point light over here in white and 1000 watts. You don't really need that. The main part are the four lights on all four sides here. If I can select them. Um, the one on the left side is bluish and has 250 watts of strength. The one on the right side is 500 100 watts and orange. And the one on the top and the bottom are both 100 watts and are blue, purplish blue and red. And they are in this case all one meter squared in size. That's basically everything that is use, useful or, or needed for the, the lighting setup. I just used a completely back background that is also maybe um, good to know. And that is everything that is needed for the scene. And then I went just for the rendering part, which is um, transparent so that I don't have the black background. And I also turned on, which is more clearly visible here, the transparent glass option, which is also not that needed that much because I have a black background anyways, but I just used it. And I think the um, threshold here, point 0.1 is just normal. And I set up my um, sampling to 25 samples, which was enough. I think I have used denoising in the final result but I'm not sure um, you can turn that on if you like it denoised 
um, but more important is maybe the light path um, option and the bounces which were um, at 12 for the transmission and the other just a little bit no lower than that because we just have this transmission um, material here and speaking of the material i will go to the shading setup and just move it a little bit up so that you can see this setup i just went for a basic principle setup set up that could not really be more um, simple than that all the values that are usually um, not at zero are at zero here this one is just redundant not necessary and then i just turned on the transmission to the fullest and then animated the transmission roughness as well so that it goes from completely clear and translucent to a value of which is really random um, 0.442 and then that is that um, as you can see here i also just rendered out the first half of the animation because i just um, reversed the second part so i just save half of the rendering time that is always nice and what is maybe also good to know is that i have uh, this all all the different animations especially the modifier animation from um, uh, of course from from 0 to 120 but i also turned on the easing shape like this so that it speeds up at first and th then slows down so if i play this back maybe and just for showing this um turn on the full animation um this is how it looks it slows down a little bit so that it's um not that harsh between both of them yeah and that's it and then it loops that's everything that is needed for the 3d part i just rendered it out as an image sequence and then i went into after effects and put it in here this layer and it's just um, the first part what i was talking about 120 frames and then the second part just reversed the complete um, animation and and then i just made a few adjustments um, for both of these layers which were just levels i just um, put the input wide value to 200 instead of 255 so that it gets brighter and a little bit in, in general that, that just the whole animation sorry and then i uh, used two different glows one with uh, a radius of 500 one with a thousand and the other settings are at uh, 99 percent threshold for both and the intensity is also 1.5 for both and i think the other um, settings are also just the base settings yeah so i did that and of course the radius is dependent on your scene size if i go into the scene size you can see that it's just really big and uh, yeah if you know that that this is just the a3 um, format in pixels so I went for that because it's a three H three poster, yeah, and that's why the values, uh, the radius are at five hundred and thousand. The next thing are, yeah, all of the um, different text layers basically, and they are all um, built up in the same way. I just took the the um, layer themselves, and then. As you can see here maybe this is the the info part or let me just use this probably the um, bigger text and it just has the the base um, scene the base that i exported and then i put a gradient on top with an alpha mat as you can see here and then if i just turn this off you can see the full texture which just looks like this and then it's animated to rotate around itself and um, go from from i think just zero degrees to 360 or back and forth i don't really remember it's not important just go for what looks good to your eye and then the effect i use for these is the turbulent displace and these settings are also just up to your liking and if i turn this off this is the base texture how it looked before 
And then, um, yeah, this also just has the, the glow thing because of the ad adjustment layer, which is just um, used for everything down here. Um, yeah, and I forgot to turn this back. Let me just go back like this, maybe. That was one step too far. Okay, um, and then the rest is done by animating all the parts. Uh, just yeah, going for the position animation here. Um, start point, midpoint, and then the end point. And then uh, it just also loops. If I go into the curve settings, you can maybe see yeah how the curve looks. That's the curve for all of the text parts, for example but that is mostly just up to per personal preference. Um, and what is maybe also not so um, unimportant is how I animated the, the white parts in the mid here. And that does not look that great. Okay, let me zoom out again. Um, these are just flickering and what I did for that is also pretty simple. I went into the opacity setting and used an expression to let this yeah wiggle it's just called wiggle and then brackets i think maybe these are called brackets sorry english is not my first language um, brackets um to 90 20 if you're interested in that uh, just google that <laughs> maybe um i can't really explain that i always forget which one which value does what and this is the same thing for the second just with different values 390 and 50 in this case and that is everything that I animated with expressions and the rest um, if I open all the keyframes are just um, the, the turbulent displays and then um, just position scale and that's basically it yeah that's the animation of this poster that's all of it everything that you need to know I think yeah, and the rest is done by all these layers used with alpha masks and rotating and with a turbulent displays just makes this a whole disco i would say and that's it for this poster and i am happy to hear your feedback about this if you have something for me you can always tell me and yeah i am up for questions if you have any suggestions for what i can or I should maybe do in the next um, parts what, what you would like to see. I also have a lot more posters maybe that you would like to see. And let me just search this one. Uh, this poster, for example, will be um, one of the next videos that I will definitely do just because uh, it was requested already. So you will see this next and yeah, just tell me what you think about it. Just tell me what you would like to see, how you think this kind of video is. It's uh, convenient and easy for me. But if you think you would like to have some more details, um, you can also just tell me and then I can maybe uh, adjust according to that. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope uh, you learned something. I hope I will see you in the next videos and thanks for watching again and bye.